In this video, I will work on this BMW E70, it's an X5. This car has an annoying problem. It's not a very important one, but it's very annoying. When outside is raining and this car is wet, the PDC parking distance control will not work. But now it's not raining, this car is not wet and the system is working. Sometimes when you want to diagnose something, if the error is not permanently present, it's a little bit harder to be diagnosed or not. So if you want to see how I will diagnose it and eventually how I will be able to repair this car, you are in the right place, so don't go anywhere. Now it's working. So in a case like this, what you will do to find out what is the problem? If you say that you will come here and search a video about this, you have failed because you are wrong. First thing, you need to scan the car to see what errors you will have and from there we will go further. So to do that, I will use my diagnostic equipment, the ICOM, and I need to Make sure that the wireless router is on because I'm using the system wirelessly. Never put the ICOM on the floor. We have some LEDs, LEDing doing what they are supposed to do. Switch on the ignition, turn off the climate control, turn off the lights and start to connect with the car. After scanning the car, I have some errors, display fault memories, and I have glow plugs, uh, boost pressure control, smooth running controller. Uh, this is not a very good error. This is about the injectors. Uh, fuel filter heating, uh, PDC, ultrasonic sensor front center left. We have a heat. Uh, this is the seat, CIS, uh, reversing camera, PDC data invalid. Uh, selector lock, selector button, uh, reverse light and daytime running light. Okay, so we have only one error here about the ultrasonic sensor front center left for this system, but you can see here the error is not present. Uh, to see how many times this uh, error have occurred, I will hit show fault codes, details, and I can see here three times. First time when this error have occurred outside was a little bit colder than the last one. Uh, faulty currently not present, implausible signal or value. Okay, and from the description, being an E-series, it's a little bit older. Uh, we don't have any fault code description. For newer generation, F-series will have here uh, very useful information, but in this case we don't have any. And with this I have a lead. I will start by checking the front center left sensor. And this is the front center left PDC sensor. This is the front center right and that one is the exterior left and exterior right. So on this one we have an error, we have three errors. Um, you can do a very simple and quick and short test on the PDC sensors without having the diagnostic equipment. You will need to switch on the ignition, activate the PDC, even if the PDC is not working, you need to activate it. And uh, after that, you can come and touch every sensor. You need to touch the diaphragm, the surface of the sensor. You don't need to push very hard. You need to touch it and feel it because you will feel the sensor, how it's vibrating. If the sensor is vibrating, that means that the sensor has power supply. But this doesn't mean necessarily that this sensor is in good working condition. Even if uh, the sensor has uh, vibration, uh, the sensor can be, uh, cannot work properly. For example, it cannot show anything 
or it can show permanently an object in front of it even if in the front of the sensor it's nothing. Or if you have something in front of the sensor, the sensor will not show you that and you will hit the car. To listen the sensors, But I repeat, this is not a very accurate measurement. I'm able to do another test on this type of sensors. Uh, with my finger, again, I will push a little bit harder than usual on the diaphragm of the sensor and I will wobble it. I will move it like this. I will do this motion. Uh, if the diaphragm have a problem, the system instantly will give me an error message about this, but in this car, this is not the case. Next step uh, for me is to remove the front bumper to check the plugs and the wiring. Don't worry, on this car to remove the front bumper is very easy, it's not complicated and you will see in a couple of seconds. But before of this, I want to go in the trunk to check the PDC module because on this type of cars equipped with panoramic sunroof, the rear of the trunk sometimes will be flooded because of the drains from the sunroof. So let's go and check that out. And of course, on this car, I need to remove the rear bumper also because the bracket for this sensor, it's detached from the bumper. Uh, you can even see the trace where this bumper have been hit by another car or by something else, you can see. Ah, and this one it's detached also. This one is okay. That one it's ugly. This one also it's okay. And also that one it's ugly. From here, you can see this one is the PDC module. I need to remove it. Let me unplug it first. The plug seems to be okay. Okay, now I will open it, but the plugs, they are in perfect condition. And the board, it's impeccable. Okay. Okay, so if you everything it's okay I will mount the module back I will leave this like this because for the rear bumper, I need to release this harness, this wiring. Now I will start to remove the front bumper. To remove the front bumper, I need to open the hood. From here, I need to remove these screws, five screws, they are with eight millimeter. Now from this side, I have a screw here and one here but it's missing and a couple of screws here like any other bumper This type of screws didn't supposed to 
uh, fall down but they are missing uh, they have a special clip here in this groove what is missing that will keep in place the screw on this bumper and the same on this side this screw is missing but this one is present Now I need to pull from here, like so. The same from here. And slowly, but surely. Let me do something else. I don't want to scratch the paint. And also from this side. Like so. Perfect. Now remember to take out the bumper like so and I need to disconnect the plug from here for the parking distance control sensors wow. what is this Seems to be grease here inside of this plug. Yeah, it's grease. What? Never do that. Never ever. Okay, now with the front bumper removed, I have access to the complete harness and the individually sensors. Okay, let's start from here. I think. This can be a cause for this problem, but for this to be a real cause, I need to have an access point for the water inside here. This is not correct. Okay, I need to wash these plugs. Next step, I will need to check the hardness. This is the plug. It's perfectly dry. <laughs> the sensor seems to be okay. I will replace this sensor. You can see here this crack from here. I think inside here the water will enter and that's why this sensor is doing these problems. And for this I will replace this sensor. It's not very expensive. Uh, next I will check the harness and I will replace the sensor.
Okay, here I have some work done. So I want to check to see why, what it's about. Okay, so from what I see, not a big of a deal, only the protective tape have been replaced. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now I will check the back of this sensor. Seems to be okay on this one. This one's looking better. And this one from here. And this one's a little bit cracked. A little bit cropped but not like this one okay uh, I want to switch this sensor with that one because that one is perfect this one is a little bit cracked and you can replace that sensor by releasing some screws from there and force your hand will be a little bit easier than remove all this bumper uh, there I will have a new sensor this one okay from the old one I need this rubber gasket This is the sensor. Bellissimo. And from here. Switch these two sensors. to check the rubber gasket it's perfect okay next step I need to wash this plug with uh, some brake cleaner same now with the contact spray
Okay, now I will put back the bumper. First I need to connect back the PVC plug. Perfect. On this side, this bumper, it's a little bit destroyed. And now I will put all the screws back. Here, unfortunately, the bumper, the bracket for, from the bumper, it's uh, broken, is no longer there. So I don't have any screw to put there. Something like that, and I have here some clips <laughs> that they are not supposed to be here. This one are not from here. And on this side, I really need to be careful. Something like that. Now, with the front done, I will move my attention to the rear of the car. Here the same, I will need to remove the rear half of the bumper, only the black part. So to do this, I will need to remove this arch, because I have a hidden screw here. Uh, this reflector, I have a couple of screws uh, under the bumper, and after that I will be able to remove it. So, let's start with this part here. I need to break these rivets now I'm able to pull this trim like so because I need to access this screw from here This have a clip on this side. This one. Because I have a hidden screw here. From 
running the bumper, I have a couple of screws. I need to keep uh, this at an angle to have access here. Like so. Ah, before I will remove the bumper, uh, I need to disconnect the PDC harness from inside of the trunk. You can see down, down there, I need to push out that grommet. Now I need to glue this back and this one. Okay, uh, before I will start to do something else, I want to check the wiring because here the wiring is very flat because when this bumper was damaged, the wire has been clipped here. You can see the mark, it's a little bit flat this area. At the moment the wires are safe. I will replace this sensor also because I have a new one. Uh, the owner wanted a new one here, so I will put a new one. And as you can see here, the bracket was uh, bonded by melting. So I will do the same. I will align the bracket with the old marks and I will sacrifice the tip of my soldering gun and I will start to melt the plastic here.
something like this. Next, you. I think it's perfect. Next I want to check the wires here to this sensor. The wires are a little bit kinked here. But it's not a very big problem. If you want to know what tape is this, Go in the video description. You'll have links there. Okay, now I need to send this plug through that hole in the trunk. Something like that.
the rear sensors are in their place. and the sensors are working okay now i will erase the error from the pdc module um, pdc call up acu component triggering delete fault memories trigger component Identification, ACU test, okay, close, PDC, it's green, no more errors, and it's working, perfect. Next, the rest of the errors, um, I will deal with uh, them later. I need to do a test on the boost pressure control. This is a very important thing. And the smooth running controller. The glove plugs will need to be replaced with the glove plugs relay. And rest of the errors are not very, very important. The GWS is the gear selector. It's with the problem. It's in that, in this way for a very long time. And I will need to replace a bulb, the daytiming running lights on the left, and this is all. And I will end this video here. If you like it, show me by hitting the like button. Thank you for watching these videos, thank you for being with me, and till next time, stay awesome. Bye now. <laughs>